Gracious God, thank you for this time of praise and worship where we come before you as one group of people but united all across this world in praising you and loving you. Thank you for this theme today of the unity of our partnership. Thank you for this body that you have given us called the church. Be with us now as we hear and learn from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you for allowing me to sit today. I uh, am not feeling as well as I would like, so thank you. I want to first say what a gift it has been for all of us to be here with you this week. I have been a pastor at Westwood for 20 years, and it was in my first year at Westwood that a group of us came to Arusha Road. This uh, sanctuary was just being built and there was grass on the floor and no windows. And it was one of the most wonderful worship experiences of my life. Each time I have come back, I have seen how much God is doing through you in this community with all the growth. Your faith has changed me and it has changed Westwood. Asante sana. Thank you uh, to. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Thank you to Mchungaji Lucy and Mchungaji Palangio, to the partnership committee who has done so much work in arranging all of the things we are doing. Asante kwa mchungaji Lucy, kwa mchungaji Palancho, lakini asante pia kwa kamati yote ya mahusiano kwa kuendelea uh, kusimamia uhusiano huu. Thank you also to Rachel who I met the first time when she was 17 years old. So it's fun to share this message today. Asante pia kwa Rachel ambaye kwa mara ya kwanza nimekutana naye akiwa na miaka 17. Kwa hiyo ni jambo zuri sisi kuendelea kushirikiana. And also, thank you to those who have prepared meals here at the church or hosted meals in your home. We are very, very grateful. I bring you warm greetings from your brothers and sisters at Westwood and from Pastor Jason and Danica, who some of you know on our staff. We talk of you and remember you in our prayers often. For many years, we have been partners with you in the wonderful work uh, your diaconate committee is doing with the orphans. And we have packed food in our church that is now upstairs in your church that you will bring to people in need in the community. And so we see this circle of love continuing. Na pia, chakula, hata sasa hivi pia, 
ambacho chakula hicho mara nyingi kimekuwa kikitumiwa kugaiwa katika jamii za watu wanaoishi katika mazingira magumu lakini pia uh, ninapenda kusema kwamba muungano huu wa kuendelea kutoa chakula hiki umeendelea kutusogeza karibu na kuendelea kuleta upendo kati yetu and we extend an invitation for you up to send a group to Westwood to come and visit us and have a family reunion in Minnesota next spring. Lakini pia napenda nilete ukaribisho huu kwa watu kikundi kidogo cha watu ambacho kitakwenda kutembelea kule Westwood mwakani mwezi wa 5 ili tuendeleze umoja wetu kama familia. We are so grateful also for this beautiful song that was written Mungu Chujali Umoja. Lakini pia tunayo furaha kubwa kwa ajili ya huu wimbo ambao umeandikwa ambao kwaya imeimba pamoja na wageni wetu hapa wenye adhimu inayosema Mungu tujalie umoja. I would like to continue this theme of unity by looking at God's word about community and unity. Ninapenda kuendelea kuangalia adhimu hii ya umoja kwa kuangalia neno la Mungu kuhusu umoja wa jumuiya zetu. The Bible reading that I would like to share a few verses happens right after Pentecost. Na neno la Mungu ambalo ningependa tushirikiane asubuhi hii ya leo ni neno ambalo linazungumzia Pentecoste imewadia. When the Holy Spirit came with wind and fire and all the people understood the good news of Jesus in their own language. Na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu zilikuja kwa upepo na moto na kila aliyesikia habari njema za Yesu alisikia katika lugha yake. That day is called the birthday of the church. Na hiyo siku inaitwa siku ya kubatizwa kwa kanisa. Listen carefully now to this scripture and listen to what it is that the new believers do together. Sasa tusikilize neno la Mungu lakini pia tusikilize vizuri kuhusu hawa watu wapya wanafanya nini kwa pamoja. From Acts chapter 2 beginning at verse 41. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. <laughs> Mstari wa 41 mpaka 48 tutasoma kwa msada wa Bwana Nao waliolipokea neno lake wakabatizwa na siku ile wakaongezeka watu wapata elfu tatu. wakawa wakidumu katika fundisho la mitume na katika ushirika na katika kuumega mkate na katika kusali kila mtu akaingiwa na hofu ajabu nyingi na ishara zikafanywa na mitume na wote walioamini walikuwa mahari pamoja na kuwa na vitu vyote shirika wakeuza mali zao na vitu vyao walivyokuwa navyo na kuwagawia watu wote kama kila mtu alivyokuwa na haja na siku zote kwa moyo mmoja walidumu ndani ya hekalu wakimiga mkate nyumba kwa nyumba na kushiriki chakula chao kwa furaha na kwa moyo mweupe wakimsifu Mungu na kuwapendeza watu wote Bwana akalizidisha kanisa kila siku kwa wale waliokuwa wakiokolewa amen This is God's word na hili ndilo neno la Mungu Dr. Martin Luther King talked about this in his last book. Uh, Martin Luther aliongea juu ya hili katika kitabu chake cha mwisho. He said some years ago a famous writer died. Alisema miaka kadhaa iliyopita mwandishi maarufu alifariki. And in his papers was found a list 
of ideas for things he might write about. Na katika karatasi zake ilipatikana karatasi iliyokuwa ina idadi ama mjumuisho wa maono kwa ajili ya uh, hadithi za maisha ya baadaye. One of them was this. A family that was separated all around the world inherits a house in which they are to live together. Na moja kati ya karatasi hizo zilikuwa imeandikwa hivi familia kubwa iliyogawanyika imerithi nyumba kubwa ambayo wanatakiwa wote kukaa pamoja Dr King says we have inherited a large house in which we all must live together Lakini pia Dr Martin Luther kaendelea kwa kusema kwamba sisi sote tumerithi nyumba kubwa ambayo tunapaswa kuishi pamoja Black and white Easterner and Westerner Mweupe kwa mweusi, wa magharibi kwa wa mashariki, Gentile and Jew, Catholic and Protestant, Wakatoliki kwa wa Protestanti, Muslim and Hindu, a family that is separated by ideas and culture, wa Islamu kwa wa Hindi, familia ambayo imetenganishwa na tamaduni nyingi, who now must learn to live together in peace familia ambayo inapaswa kujifunza kukaa pamoja kwa amani This is the house where you and I live. We are family. Na hii ni nyumba ambayo mimi na wewe tunaishi. Mimi na wewe ni sehemu ya familia. I remember the first time I came to Arusha Road when Pastor Munisi was serving here. Ninakumbuka kwa mara ya kwanza kabisa nilipokuja hapa Arusha Road kipindi ambacho mchungaji Munisi alikuwa anahudumu katika kanisa hili and as i was up here in this same place i told pastor munisi i finally understand paul's words in the bible where he says we are all one body with simply many parts na nikiwa nimekaa katika eneo hili hili la madhabahu ndipo nilipomwambia mchungaji kwamba Nimeelewa zaidi kile alichokiandika Mtume Paulo kuhusu kwamba sisi wote ni mwili mmoja lakini wenye viungo mbalimbali. I said when I came here and saw all of you I found my ear or my elbow or my leg. Kwa hiyo pia nilimwambia nilipokuja hapa basi kukutana na nyinyi uh, kuna namna nilijisikia kama nimepata sehemu ya mkono wangu au sehemu ya bega langu ama sehemu ya sikio langu. I felt more complete as the body of Christ. Nilijisikia kukamilishwa zaidi kama sehemu ya mwili wa Kristo. This is how Jesus made us to be together. Na hivi ndivyo Mungu alivyotutengeneza tuwe wamoja. I think of the story in Luke of the lost sheep. Kama tukiangalia katika ile story ya kitabu cha Mtakatifu Luka kuhusu ile story ya wale kondomu ya moja there are 100 sheep 99 stay together right and one little sheep goes off and is lost kulikuwa kuna kondomu ya moja kondo 99 walikuwa pamoja lakini kondomu moja alikuwa kizunguka zunguka peke yake and what does the shepherd do na huyu mchungaji alifanya nini finds that sheep brings them back and places them in community Alienda kumtafuta yule kondomu mmoja aliyepotea akamchukua na kumrudisha katikati ya kundi la wale kondoo 99. This is where we are cared for and loved. Na hapa ndipo tunapopata kujaliwa na kupendwa. One of my favorite Bible verses is from Isaiah 43. Moja kati ya mistari yangu pendwa kabisa kwenye Biblia ni kutoka kitabu cha Isaya 43 where God says I have called you by name and you are mine. Pale Mungu anaposema kwamba nimewaita kwa jina langu na ninyi ni wangu. You are precious in my sight, God says, and I love you. Ninyi ni wathamani kwangu, Mungu anasema na anawapenda. That is who you are. You are loved. Na hivyo ndivyo tulivyo tunapendwa. You belong to a God who has put you in a family. 
Nyinyi nyote mnapendwa na Mungu ambaye amewaamini na kuwaweka kuwa sehemu ya familia. Into this new kind of community where we have all been washed in the waters of baptism and marked with the cross of Christ. Katika jumuiya hii ama mkusanyiko huu ambao umeoshwa kwa maji ya ubatizo na kuwekewa alama ya msalaba wa Yesu Kristo. And I think you Tanzanians understand this better than we Americans do. Lakini pia nafikiri nyinyi wa Tanzania mnaelewa somo hili zaidi kuliko hata sisi wa Marekani. I remember hearing the Tanzanians saying guest in the house God in the house. Na ninakumbuka niliwahi kusikia mtanzania mmoja akisema kwamba mgeni ndani ya nyumba Mungu ndani ya nyumba. You know that when we break bread together as we will this morning and share our lives together God is present. Na kama tunavyofahamu kwamba tunapoumega mkate mmoja kama ambavyo tutakwenda kushiriki pamoja basi Mungu yupo katikati yetu. I would love to hear your stories of what this body at Arusha Road Church means to you. Ninatamani kusikia kutoka kwenu juu ya huu mwili wa Kristo hapa Arusha Road una maana gani kwenu ama mmeelewa vipi? What this church has meant to me has been a great inspiration. Lakini hii kwangu mimi imekuwa ni kitu cha msukumo sana. The commitment you have to care for this community. Jinsi ambavyo mnajitoa katika kujali jumuiya hii. You are a beautiful example of this scripture from Acts the second chapter. Ninyi mmekuwa ni mfano mzuri kabisa kutoka katika kitabu hiki tulichokisoma. In the New Testament, the word that is used for this body, the church, is ecclesia. Uh, katika kitabu cha Agano Jipya, neno ambalo linatumika sana kuhusu huu mwili wa Kristo ama kanisa ni ecclesia. And it never means a building. It always means the people. Lakini pia neno hili halikuwai kumanisha kanisa kama jengo lakini kama watu walioitwa the church is those who follow jesus christ so it is us kwa hiyo kanisa ni wale watu wanaomfuata kristo kwa maana hiyo sisi ni kanisa and this kind of godly community where we care for one another and share what we have with those in need na kwa muunganiko huu tunaoufanya kwa kwa, kwa njia ya kujaliana na kuwajali wale watu wote ambao wako kwenye mahitaji is not something that God has planned for us in the future but it is here now sio jambo ambalo Mungu ameliandaa kwa ajili yetu kwa ajili ya maisha ya baadaye lakini lipo sasa hivi katika yetu look around for a minute and see the members of your body that are here Unaweza ukatazama kushoto kwako, kulia kwako na utaona ni jinsi gani sisi sote tu viungo katika mwili wa Kristo. God gave you these brothers and sisters. Mungu amekupa hawa kaka na dada. And in this place we are all given one common name. Na sisi sote mahali hapa tumepewa jina moja tunalotumia. Beloved child of God wapendwa watoto wa Mungu And once we know we are beloved then this body is called to go out into the world and be Christ's light Na mara tu tunapojua kwamba sisi sote tunapendwa basi ni jukumu letu la kutoka huko nje na kuwa nuru inayoangaza kwa ajili ya Kristo My prayer today is that we are strengthened through this unity we are strengthened through the gifts that God gives us in this place. So, go ahead. Maombi yangu siku hii ya leo ni kwamba sisi sote tuimarishwe juu ya yale yote ambayo Mungu ameyaweka ili tuweze kuyafanya. So that we might go into the world as lights. Ili sasa tuweze kwenda ulimwenguni kote kama nuru ya Yesu Kristo. 
knowing that God's hand will always guide us. Huko tukijua mkono wa Mungu siku zote utakuwa ukituongoza. And God's love will always support us. Na upendo wa Mungu utakuwa juu yetu. May it be so. Mungu awabariki. Na iwe hivyo Mungu awabariki.